In the way of righteousness is life, and in its pathway there is no death. My name's Arthur, thank you for joining me as we focus on Proverbs chapter 12 verse 28. In the way of righteousness is life, and in its pathway there is no death. And the scriptures tell us to choose life. Why will you die? Why not choose the way of righteousness, the way of life, rather than the many other ways, which are the ways of death? Jesus said, Enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it. But narrow is the gate and difficult is the way that leads to life, and there are few who find it. The whole reason that God revealed himself to Abraham is given to us in Genesis chapter 18, verse 17 to 19. The Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I'm doing? Since Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I have known him in order that he may command his children and his household after him, that they keep the way of the Lord, to do righteousness and justice, that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has spoken to him. God gave instructions to Abraham for him to pass on to his children and from his children to the whole world about how we are to live, that they should keep the way of the Lord to do righteousness and justice. And our proverb says, In the way of righteousness is life, and in its pathway there is no death. The Lord Jesus explained his ministry with the words, I have come that they might have life, and might have life more abundant, a full life, a fulfilling life. And the proverb says, in this way of life, there is no death. For while we each must enter into physical death, because we live in physical bodies in a condemned world, it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. For the gospel proclaimed in the New Testament is that Whoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So that although we naturally begin our lives living by the flesh, by the ways of the flesh, we are all challenged to turn away from that way of death to the way of life, to live God's way, trusting in him. We are not saved because of our righteousness, but we follow after righteousness because we are saved. This was a great debate that went on in the early church, the role of faith and works. So the Jewish people were very much committed to their works, to their tithing and to their temple observances, and they had added a whole stack of extra rules, which Jesus called the tradition of the elders, which are not binding on believers. For they were not binding on Jews, but they had been laid on by the Pharisees upon the Jews. They were not part of the way of God, although many of them say they were. And so today, some Christians add to the Scriptures obligations which are not found in Scripture. If they're not in Scripture, then no matter what argument you might put to justify them, they are not incumbent upon believers. They are not part of the way of life. For there's another proverb that says there's a way that seems right to a man, but the ends thereof are the ways of death, because every man has his own right way, but there is only one way of righteousness, and that is the way of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus says. No one comes to the Father except through me. And so that means that Every other way is the way of death, for there is no other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. But if we enter into God's way, then there is no death at the end of that way. So we have eternal life. It's presented to us now as a present possession. 
even though we still tr- struggle with sin. That struggle is presented to us in Romans chapter 8. There is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. There are two ways, the way of the flesh and the way of righteousness, the way of God and the way of the devil. And Christ has dealt with the way of the flesh by dying in the flesh. And so in Galatians, Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. This responsibility of making a choice was first expressed by Joshua. Well, Joshua is simply the Hebrew version of the name Jesus. And choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served, which were on the other side of the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, the living God. This service is to follow the way of righteousness. As Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, keep my commandments. Jesus explains how we can enter into the way of life in John chapter 5. Most assuredly, I say to you, He who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment but has passed from death to life. Assuredly, I say to you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself and has given him authority to execute judgment because he's the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, for... The hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. I can of myself do nothing, as I hear I judge, and my judgment is righteous because I do not seek my own will but the will of the Father who sent me. So Jesus explains he is the judge and he gives eternal life to those who believe in him. Paul explains that that means that we are given the righteousness of Christ. How does this happen? It's not by works that we have done, but the works that we do show what we believe. You he made alive, he says in Ephesians chapter 2, who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up together, and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, that God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So, choose life. In the way of righteousness is life, and in its pathway there is no death. 